Hi guys, uh, I had a question asking me this morning, so I thought I'd post you a video. Um, it's from Richard. He's asking in regards to my winter shed. Hi Ian, just a question uh, regarding your dead bees. Do you monitor all the drop? What's the absolute max your bees can go without a flight? Do you have a target flight date for next spring? Thanks for the tour. Richard. Um, I get a lot of people ask me this very question. Just the ability for the bees to hang on for such a long time in confinement uh, amazes many people. Uh, simply put, it amazes me too. So my bees go into winter in November and they come out sometime in March. Sometimes it's April, usually they come out in March. How long can they be held? I'm thinking we're pressing the limits at five, five and a half, six is probably a long time. I find when the bees are in confinement for four months, four months is really easy to get them through. It's that fifth month in March, which we seem to have the most stress symptoms that happen uh, in the winter shed. They start to get really antsy. They'll start running on the boxes. We'll get more bee drop on the floor. If the hives have a gut infection like nosema of some type uh, or a yeast infection, you'll start seeing uh, bee poop on the front of the hive entrances. Um, it's basically that time when the bees really see a lot of stress. So I'm thinking five months is a long time. When you look at a growth chart, um, the bees start winter in uh, September and you get them all the way to March. That's, that's we're pushing 180 to 200 day old bees. And when I look at uh, an age chart of of the age of the bees all the way through winter, you'll find um, the, the population and the structure of that winter nest pretty much stays static all the way through winter, right till March. I'm, I find when I put my bees out in the spring, uh, as soon as we do that, I find the queen starts laying almost immediately. As soon as that queen starts laying, um, those bees will start taking care of that next generation of brood. And when they do that, they pass on that protein and fat reserve they've been hanging on to all winter. And what they do is they take that protein and the fat stores from their bodies and they pass it on to that next generation of brood to rejuvenate that nest. And as soon as they do that, that time clock starts on those bees and they'll die uh, in three weeks or so. That point of time, in the whole year for the colony is when the winter nest rejuvenates into the springtime nest. They're, they're going through a hardship of winter just by their strategy is just simply hang on and get till spring. Their only objective is to rejuvenate that nest and what they do is they mine absolutely everything out of them to give it to that next generation of bees. That spring turnover is a very important time for a honeybee nest. So you'd asked about my target flight uh, in the spring when I put my bees out. My target bee flight in the spring follows my entire wintering strategy here. It follows the way I understand how these bees are wintering, okay? When I put these bees out in spring, my objective is to allow the conditions to be able to take their wintering nest strategy and transform it into their springtime strategy. And I don't want any interruptions in there for weather. So when I put my bees out, I try my hardest that they are going to go out into um, weather that's conducive to rejuvenating that nest. Okay, so we're going through end of winter. We're getting a few mild days. It's only February and I'm looking now. Uh, March can be a bitch sometimes here. So I'm not going to put those bees out in February. I'm going to hold them through March. March is probably one of the most stressful times for a wintering bee colony up here in uh, in the north. March is when bees die. Um, because if the timing gets wrong, then everything else gets thrown out of whack. So I want to put my bees out when winter is done, or when I think winter is done. It's so hard to predict. But when I see nice weather coming ahead, and it's middle of March going on, the chances of winter returning is pretty slim. So I'll put them out and hopefully I put them out, it's warm, they can take in feed, they can rejuvenate that nest, flip that uh, population around and then they're off in their aces. 
So there's a lot of risk in wintering bees indoors. Um, what I'm doing is I'm managing some of that wintering risk by con controlling the conditions, but I have to find almost perfect conditions to set them back outside into to be able to carry on their development. And I'm getting pretty good at uh, picking those times, putting them out, and you know maybe there's a little more leeway there than which I'm describing. This method between many beekeepers is a little bit different between us all because we all understand how this wintering process happens. Uh, we put more uh, weight on certain factors than other ones. Um, so, but for me, my wintering strategy is to get those bees through winter and then I'm finding the best week to set those bees out in spring and I'm going to give them everything I can to provide the conditions to rejuvenate that nest because that is one of the most important times in the whole bee's development is uh, rejuvenating that nest. Uh, as far as uh, you asked about uh, my bee drop and if it correlates to uh, losses and such, and I ke I've kept track of my bee drop in the shed uh, forever and I can't correlate it to a success of wintering or, or health of hives or anything. So I stopped keeping track of that. A lot of people find it very surprising the amount of bee drop that I do collect off the floors in the winter shed. And the thing is, it's happening in your hives too, it's just you're not seeing it because they're flying off into the snow or off into the grass, you know, away. I bring my hives in, in fall. I'll have, uh, as you, if you're watching my videos, you notice all my entrances were pretty dirty with dead bees because I had snow and ice coming and all that. But I'm walking the aisles now and those bees have clean, cleaned the house. They've kicked them all off into the aisleway. They clean their house. The old dead bees, as they die, they, they fly to the nest. And while they do that, they all house clean. They'll take dead bees and they'll bring it out with them and they'll fly off into the dark. It's just what bees do. They just constantly want to maintain a clean nest and they'll do everything they can to keep that nest clean. And when they're, when they're going to die, they, they remove themselves from the nest. In a very controlled condition, uh, we just see all these dynamics happening. So I hope that answered your question. Um, if not, shoot me another email and, uh, and we'll chat.